Hello golf fans, I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my daily fantasy golf top picks for the Masters. Before we get started, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to get over to RotoPros.com. Click on that yellow sign up button, get your free trial today, come in, see what we're all about in our RotoPros community chat. As you can see here, we got um, we provide lineup coaching, live shows, skeleton lineups, um, premium articles in the chat. We have discussions for every sport. We cover almost every single sport, MLB, NHL, PGA, NASCAR, NBA, um, soccer in there as well. We've got MEA, MMA sorry, coming down the line here um, fairly soon as well. Myself, I've got uh, an MLB video series coming up going over some of the, the metrics that I use um, in my cheat sheet as well as how I uh, use some of those sites and some of those metrics to um, put together my daily research. So definitely get over to RotorPros.com. Get your free trial. Check out what we have to offer. Pretty sure you're going to be happy and stick around um, with your weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription. With that, let's get into this week's picks. So this week, biggest week in DFS PGA, biggest week in the PGA Tour, one of the most anticipated tournaments of the year. We got the Masters from Augusta National, one of the most pristine golf courses on the planet. So we've got a par 72. It's 7,435 yards. Um, before we get in, we just want to look at the course here a little bit. Um, using FantasyNational.com, their course breakdown. A couple things that stand out to me looking at the whole composition, whole composition here is that five of the par fours are 450 to 500 yards. Um, going down even further, a couple things I'm looking at is that Hitting the fairways is a little bit easier here, but when it comes to hitting the greens, it's a lot tougher. Scrambling is a lot tougher here as well, and that has to do with the greens are large, or slightly larger than average, but there are shaved banks, and that just means um, you know the fringe isn't really there to stop balls. Balls um, with spin are definitely going to roll off the green, and then a lot of those greens, um, just with all the undulation that is there, you're going to see uh, fall off. So. Uh, some of the holes on your approach shots, the green may be you know, a certain size, but you take away a third of that green in where you can land the ball because if you land it on that one third, it's going to roll off the green as well. So hitting that green and sticking it um, is very difficult here. So definitely guys that uh, are on point with their approach shots are going to have a bit of an advantage. So definitely be looking at strokes gain approach a little bit more than strokes gain off the tee um, with the easier fairways to hit. But I will be looking at some distance this week just because it is a longer course. we got some longer holes there as well. And then scrambling, you know, if guys aren't going to be hitting a lot of greens, they're going to be scrambling a lot. So we're definitely going to be looking at scrambling, the guys that are on point with that. And we hear that in a lot of player quotes um, from years past. You can definitely head over to Future of Fantasy, go to their golf and act, find the Masters, and at the bottom of the page there is tons of quotes from players. And that's one thing they say is that one consistent trait of all um, players that really get in there um, on the leaderboard on Sundays uh, have spent those three or four rounds scrambling, um, strokes gain around the green, gaining strokes there a lot. So those are some things I'm looking at, some things I think this is a course that's going to test fast all facets of a player's game. The greens are really fast, so we're going to want to be looking at putters who are good on fast, lightning fast greens. You can do that with Fantasy National as well. You can break that down. Um, you can also, another nice feature now is you can actually click on an individual player. So instead of looking at the stat engine just for every player in the field and then switching stats, you can actually look at each individual player's round, which is just an amazing tool. So make sure to get over to FantasyNational.com and, and check that out. You won't be disappointed there as well. <clears throat> so looking at that, we've kind of we're looking at some distance. We're looking at guys that can maybe separate themselves with strokes gained approach, um, scrambling as well. And then just another thing that I was looking at that really stood out to me between par four and par five scoring. Um, I'll just show you last year, for instance. We'll go up here and we'll type in Masters. We'll go to the 2018 Masters, and what we're going to do is we're just going to look at par four so that's a leaderboard from last year we're going to look at par four efficiency so the leaders in par four patrick reed um, all the guys in the top five finished top five in par four scoring go over to par five patrick reed also led par five par five scoring this year um, but you start going back i think we can go back all the way yeah, to 2012 here and what i found with that was that the leader um, just going 28 to 20 2018 to 2012, here's the par four ranks of the winner. First, 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 second, fourth, first, eighth. 
And then here's the par 5 uh, where the winner had finished and strokes gained par 5 that year. 1st, 20th, 82nd, 4th, 5th, 44th, 8th. Much more consistent with the par 4s. Um, and I think a reason for this is the par 5s are four of the easiest holes in the course. Most players should be able to score on these holes. But to separate yourselves, you're going to want to score on these harder par 4s, uh, especially those five that are 450 to 500 yards. So I'm definitely looking at guys that are coming in, um, trending in that par 4 uh, as well. So with that, uh, that's just some stuff that I'm looking at. Uh, course history, definitely a little bit more here this week at the Masters, just with um, the course, um, you know, the relevance with the course and just how big of an event it is. Um, so definitely looking at some course history. Guys that usually play well here do play well. Um, first timers, usually not looking a whole lot at them. But um, the guys that I'm looking at, you know, if I see that they've played here once, um, maybe made the made the cut but didn't have a great finish, I like that over someone, you know, if you're deciding between two players, I'd rather have that guy that's, who's been here once than the guy who hasn't. Um, so experience is definitely going to be key. So with that, let's jump in. Let's have a look at a couple picks here for this week. I don't want to get into all my player pool. Um, you can definitely find my player pool, which will be finally updated later this afternoon on this page here, the targets and bets. So here's kind of my start. I've got outright bets, top tens, first round leaders. I'm going to add some more, <clears throat> so stay tuned. But some of my core plays this week, I'm starting with Rory McIlroy. Comes back, he checks every single box. He's had a tremendous season so far on the PGA Tour. He's finished sixth or better on all um, events in 26, or sorry, 2019. Um, sixth or better in all of those events so far. He comes back here with five straight top tens. He's looking to complete um, the career grand slam. He also checks off, obviously, the stats box. He's number one in the overall model here. Jumping over. He's number one in strokes gained off the tee. He's got a ton of distance. He's really good in approach, so that makes him first in strokes gained ball striking. Fourth in par four scoring. Um, scrambling down 48th, but the strokes gain around the green was a little bit better. But he's a guy that can hit those greens and separate himself with strokes gain approach. Um, so I'm not as concentrated with guys like that that can really nail their approaches and have the distance and stuff. They're going to have some shorter approaches. Uh, I think they're going to hit more greens than the guys that don't have the distance. So um, I think we can downgrade scrambling or strokes gain around a green for the bit. For the guys that are elite with the par fours, elite with the distance, elite with the strokes gained um, approach. As you can see here, Rory is also seventh in proximity. So definitely like that on multi-tiered greens um, where you really need to hit your spots. Not just hit the green, but you really need to hit your spots. So proximity is really important also when looking at your strokes gained approach. So I mean, you could definitely adjust this model um, quite a bit here. Like it puts them in bogey avoidance and birdie or better, you could adjust this around a little bit and take a little bit away from strokes gain around the green, add some to scrambling, um, proximity with your strokes gain approach. I mean, there's so many ways you can go about doing this um, with your model. So the top is very is very close for me. The top three golfers are the top three price golfers on DraftKings, McElroy, Johnson, and Rose. I will have exposure to all three. Um, all three have played well here. Um, all three are coming in with pretty good form. They all got huge winning upside. I will have more McElroy and then Johnson and then Rose in that order. A little bit, just a little bit out of line to what my ranks actually say, but I'm looking at those three as my top. My pivot this week for GPPs, I'm going to get a lot of them. Just really love the price here is uh, Justin Thomas, number four in my model. Being that he's the fifth most expensive golfer, I really like because um, there, there is going to be a lot of chalk going towards McElroy, Johnson, and Rose just because of their course history and their form. Thomas, his best finish was last year, the T17, T22 the year before, T39. So he's gotten better every year here at Augusta. He's coming in with two finishes outside the top 25, um, but we know his winning upside, and he stands out statistically as well. And we'll just look at some here. Second in strokes gained approach. Um, looking at his proximity here across the board is excellent. He's eighth in par four, um, first in all the par fives, uh, first in birdie or better percentage, so there's that upside there. Um, bogey avoidance, 16th, not bad there. Um, oh, just around that top 40 mark in scrambling, a little bit better in sand save percentage, so he, he checks that off. So if he's going to be the lowest owned of those top guys, um, 10K and up, I definitely like getting a piece of him for GPPs this week. But if you're making just one or two lineups, I'm probably going to be building around McElroy. But myself, I'm going to be doing about 20 to 50. Um, I don't think I'm going to have time to get up to that 150 max. There's some really good tournaments over on DraftKings this week. 
lower entry, the mini maxes and stuff like that. I think I'm going to concentrate on the three maxes, 20 maxes, stuff like that. I'm not going to be doing the Millie Maker. I just don't like the payout structure. I'm looking for a more flatter payout structure this week uh, for my bankroll. Um, so that's kind of the way I'm going. Thomas is definitely a GPP play for me. A couple more core plays for me in the top here. I'm looking at Tommy Fleetwood. Talked about him a lot lately. Back-to-back -back top fives coming into this one. He is tremendous off the tee. Excellent ball striker. He's tremendous around the green, so you can see that here. So that's a great combination right there for him. His proximity has been down a little bit, but the strokes gain approach are there. And again, he's a good scrambler. So for guys that maybe aren't going to hit as many greens um, or get it as close to the pin, I'm definitely looking for guys that are going to be elite scramblers. Um, strokes gain, gain strokes around the green. So Fleetwood definitely falls into that category. He's average on the par fours and par fives at 27th, top 30 range. Um, again, fourth in scrambling, first in sand saves, and 11th in bogey avoidance. So he's definitely a core play using him in all formats. Speaking of all formats, probably the chalkiest play of the week at 9,000 on DraftKings, 10-8 on FanDuel is going to be Paul Casey. Another guy with tremendous course history. T15 last year was his worst finish in the last four years, which is pretty crazy if that's a down year for him here at Augusta. It's T6, T4, T6 the years before that. He's coming off a win as well, so we're definitely uh, looking at him coming in with form, course history. And again, he's one of the, I think he's only missed, I did this research, I don't have it up in front of me, but I believe he's only missed five cuts. Um, since the start of the 2017 season. He's been one of the most consistent players on tour. So definitely looking at Casey this week. Uh, just go look at some of his stats. He's right up there in ball striking, strokes gain off the tee and approach, both of them. Um, good drive percentage, which just means um, the amount of times that you're hitting the green in regulation when you're missing the fairway. Um, so that's good. He's good in the driving accuracy aspect. So he He's a guy that's probably going to hit a lot of greens. He's not going to have that distance as some of the other guys, but he's also um, fairly good on his long irons as well, so I'm not too concerned there. Average on the par 4, excellent on the par 5, so he's definitely going to gain his strokes on the par 5s. And, I mean, as long as you get through some of those rounds, even maybe minus 1 on the par 4s, you're going to be gaining a lot of strokes on the field there as well. And then once you get to the weekend, we'll go from there. So that's one other note. Um, for those of you that play DFS PGA every week, it's usually the top 70s and ties that make it um, to the final two rounds on Saturday and Sunday. This week's a little bit different at the Masters. It's the top 50 in ties. There's only 87 players in the field, so it's the top 50 in ties. And anyone within 10 strokes of the lead also makes the cut. So we'll pay attention to that uh, a little bit more when it comes to Friday. So going down a little bit more, a couple more core plays here. <clears throat> Love the price, um, either from a betting standpoint and a DFS standpoint with Hideki Matsuyama. He's been he's been pretty good here as well. T19 last year, um, T11, T7, T5 in his last four. So he's had some consistency here. He's coming in off of the players where he actually gained strokes, 3.6 strokes in his final two rounds. So, um, gained in both, those, in both of those rounds. He's a guy that's not known for his putting, but, you know, he's coming in I mean, that's a small sample size, two rounds, but as long as he's even just field average with his putting, he's an elite ball striker. I think he's going to be on the leaderboard on Sunday, and anything can happen, you know, if you make a few putts on Sunday. So I'm definitely going to have some outright bets with him, as well as using him quite a bit in DFS. He's probably going to be chalky at 8,700. That just seems way too cheap. Now, going down even further, um, Tony Fino hasn't came in with the greatest of form here lately, <clears throat> but he finished top 10 here last year when he almost snapped his ankle in the Wednesday par 3 contest. So um, seeing that him bounce back there was was awesome to see. Definitely GPP for him. Matt Kutcher's a core play for me this week. He's been consistent here. He's been tremendous this season. He's already got two wins this season. Um, consistent all around, as you can see here. He's down a little bit. DK points, his last 10 is a rate around 90, 75 over the last five. Still Pretty decent for that sub 8K price, sub 10K price on FanDuel. So definitely going to be in my core this week with him. And then GPP, I love Matt Fitzpatrick. Talked about him a little bit. As you can see, he's got a lot of finishes, you know, outside the top 30, but he also flashes with those top 10s, top 5s as well. So definitely GPP, not as consistent from a round-per-round, round, tournament per tournament basis, but he does have that upside. He's cheap, and I think Cameron Smith, Webb Simpson, Rafa Caprera Bayo, um, even Gary Woodland, Henrik Stenson, Sergio Garcia, those guys in that low to mid 7k range. I think a lot of those guys on DraftKings are going to be more popular. So I'm going to be uh, hunting out Matthew Fitzpatrick for, um, I'll, I'll put a little bit on him, probably half unit on him um, to win um, each way. But I like him a lot more for DFS this week at 7,300. 
Brad Snedeker is a solid pick at 7,200. I think you'll consider him in all formats, especially on on DraftKings. He's a little bit higher priced on Fanduel. You can find some, you know, some better guys, but he has been consistent. T10, T27, his last two trips here, he's coming and he's been fairly consistent lately as well. Showed a little bit of upside um, lately, but he's he's what I do like about him. Just going over and looking at some of these stats here, and these stats right now are 90% current season, 2018-19 season, and then 10% weighted on the 2017-2018 season as well, just to kind of give a little bit larger sample size. So as we can see here, Brad Snedeker is number two in the field in strokes gain around the green, number three in strokes gain putting. So while his ball striking maybe isn't there with some of the other guys, he's very cheap and he's an elite around the green. So I think he's, you know, he's a lot. I hate to say a lock, but I think he's a lock to make the cut for sure. And I think definitely at this tournament where there's going to be about, you know, 55 to 60 golfers make the cut this week. I think, you know, he's probably top 20, um, top 10, probably upside and probably his floor is more like 20 to 30th place. So at that price at 7,200, that makes a lot of sense in DraftKings. Getting two guys in that low 7K range allows you to go up and pay for one of the elite players in your cash games as well this week. Charles Howell stands out. Um, he's finally making it back to Augusta. He, he hasn't played here in the last uh, five years here for sure. He's coming in with some excellent value, or sorry, some excellent form early in the year. And he fits the stats model as well. Um, he's 21st and off the tee. A little bit worse in the approach side of things, but he's excellent around the green. He's an excellent putter there, as you can see um, as well. Um, proximity is down a little bit, about 50th, but... Second in par four scoring stands out. 21st in birdie or better percentage. First in bogey avoidance. Love that for cash games at 7,800 on FanDuel. Definitely going to have some. 15th in scrambling. A little less on the sand saves. But at that price, you're not going to hit on every single stat in your model. You're not going to hit on, you know, a guy at this range isn't going to check every single box. He's pretty close. He's definitely going to be there for me this week. Someone that does stand out as one of my top values and something that I do look at on my sheet here is comparing DraftKings salary and FanDuel salary to odds. Um, so as you can see here over in these two columns, X and Y, um, that's going to show the differential. So we're looking for plus and the highest plus possible. Minus just means, like for instance, let's go look at Patrick Reed. He's a minus 11, so that kind of stands out. He's 25th in odds to win the tournament, but he's 14th in FanDuel price. And so that just tells me with a minus 11, He's overpriced on FanDuel, probably going to have none of him. A lot better value on DraftKings where he's only a minus three, but still maybe a little bit uh, overpriced. A lot of that probably has to do with him being the defending champion here. Going down a bit, <clears throat> we see Charlie Hoffman's an excellent value this week. 32nd in odds to win. Um, I'm definitely going to have him as a first-round leader as well. Um, but I'm going to talk about that here in a second, the first-round leader bets and stuff. But as you can see, he's 50th and 48th in FanDuel and DraftKings salary. So that puts him at a plus 16 and plus 18 odds differential um, play. So that's that's a really good value. With that, someone that really stands out to me this week is Kevin Kistner. He's coming off of a week where he won the match play, looked really good all week. He before he's come back, he's coming back to the Masters where he's this will be his fourth trip. T37, T43, not great. Um, career high. T28 last year, and before his recent win at the match play, he had put together top 30s in six straight tournaments going back to the start of February with the Waste Management Phoenix Open. So the form is just tremendous. If we can get another top 25, I mean those top 25s, top 30s, and regular events that are you know top 70 and tie tournaments, even though this is a bit stronger field, that probably translates more to like top 20, 15th to 20 to 25th. Um, finishes and if we can get somewhere in that 15th to 25th range at 6700 on DraftKings 8700 on FanDuel he's almost a lock for me with his form his course history the stats lately um, the only thing that concerns me here is his strokes gain around the green as you can see um, he loses a few strokes there but it hasn't really hurt him too far or in the you know in, in the past it hasn't really hurt him that much so I think his floor to be honest with you, is right around that T30 um, where he was last year at Augusta, and I think he's got top 20 upside as well. So at that price, he's definitely in there for me as well. So that covers my core plays for this week. Um, I do have a lot more plays, like I said, on the targets and bets here. I'm going to add a few more. Um, same with outright bets, top 10s, first-round leaders. I'm going to add a few more of those. If you have any questions, definitely head over to the member chat room here 
Um, like I said, for members only, get your free trial. Come check us out. Members jump in here. I'm going to be in here up until late tonight answering questions. Um, you can also head into the PGA Talk channel, sharing some advanced stats in there as well, going over things. You can also leave a comment in this YouTube video. And I will definitely get back to everyone's questions. Let's go get some green screens and watch your favorite golfers go for that green jacket this week. Good luck, everyone. Have a great week.